Hello everybody. Today we're going to talk about important factors when considering an energy upgrade to your historic or vintage home here in the Northwest. Are there any circumstances that you would not do anything to a historic home? Just let it be at the balance that it is. Is there any, can you speak to that? Yeah, I think there's, a, there's sometimes it's client-based. Um, I would think, uh, you know, it's always about budget a little bit too. And there also could be some things about a building that um, really lend itself well to kind of leaving it alone without some pretty aggressive changes. Um, but I think all buildings, let's say we've got a building that's made it 80 years, I, I kind of think a retrofit, well done, it might be a little bit expensive at the front side, but that's going to give it another 80-year mm -hmm. life. I like that. Mm -hmm. A building that was beautifully redone and, and gives it its new lease on life. Maybe it's turned into a duplex or something else. But it always feels sad that if a building is sound, um, putting in a landfill seems like a waste. Mm -hmm. And um, I think we can do those things. Today, the knowledge we have to fix um, and, and really do a great job with historic buildings is quite incre in incredible. The East Coast has done a, an amazing job of looking at old brick width buildings, you know, and the Europeans have done it as well. So you can go places in Europe and see where the brick is spalling and they're starting to replace older buildings. So we know how to do that. It just becomes, do I want to spend the money to do that? I would say the last decision there is energy. And uh, let's say that I spend um, $100,000 on a retrofit to improve a building, but that I save a thousand dollars a year in energy costs. Mm -hmm. That's a pretty good return on investment driven just by improved comfort, improved durability, and actually save on that investment. What type of changes do we make in a remodel that actually pay us back? Most of them we get back in comfort and enjoying it. I might get it on resale, but I would think you'd get it back at resale. Um, if you did an energy retrofit, you would get it back every month you live there. And I think those are nice reasons to improve and keep an older building um, in play. Are there modern materials, and this is what I'm, as you're talking, I'm thinking about this from the standpoint of, of, of contract, are there modern materials that re out there that reduce the life uh, of a home if they're not installed correctly, if they're not mm -hmm. in, and you, you know, what's your take on, on uh, more historic or more natural materials. I mean, there's a lot of materials on the market today, and are some of those materials, does, would it behoove us as contractors to stay away from in, in, in some of these circumstances? Yeah, that's, a, that's a, a, an important decision. I mean, when we're talking about the longevity of a yeah, home. Absolutely, it's true. And I think that the, the resources that we have, the, the new materials, um, aren't always contributing. Some of them, of course, could contribute solvents and pollutants to the air, right? So they could be a, I'd put a sealant on that could be unhealthy for me mm -hmm. versus something else. So I always want to be careful what's in the, in the, in the container. Um, vault organic compounds, for example, I could finish a new floor with a very uh, a high level of VOC products that would be really toxic to the mm -hmm. installer, much mm -hmm. less my family. So those would be newer materials that could put big old buildings at risk. But I would say looking at, um, what you're trying to accomplish and the materials that can come into play, it always is better to do a little research in terms of its in, in impact on the environment, as also um, in the local marketplace. Do the resources potentially come from a close source, which is always important. So there's lots of choices that get made there for what you use and how you put it into mm -hmm. the building. So I always can't blame modern materials as much as I'd say if I blew insulation in the wall, did that insulation potentially put the building at risk? And you're like, well, yeah, and it's been around forever. Yeah. So yeah. I want to make sure that does building science as well help us um, make sure that we don't make a bad choice. Use cellulose the right material for the right. right application. I could take an old cellulose product, put it into a wall, and it would fail. And I couldn't blame that on the material. I could blame right. it on not understanding how all the pieces right. fit. So I think that's why it's a great question to say the balance between will it hurt the building and could it hurt the occupant. Yeah. And occupants usually about indoor air quality, as you've talked about. How do I make sure that it's a healthy place to be? Great. great Thank pleasure. you so much. That, that was, was awesome. You. Thank you, sir.